Good morning and welcome everyone. The local union continues to be busy with both rentals and community groups using the hall. In and around the local online education for auto workers at McMaster University, please check the local website for more information or contact McMaster Area Coordinator Kim Shepstone at the following email. Um, the 2024 Unifor Family Education Program is now accepting applications. Please check out our local website in the coming days for all the information regarding this program. Also, the Resource Center set up to assist laid off members is seeing lots of members reach out and inquire about different services being offered. At present, Fanshawe College is offering commuter courses in and the response is great and courses are full at this moment. Please check online for upcoming courses and dates. And just added, Fanshawe has a course called Women of Steel Forging Forward starting January 3rd, 2024 at the Woodstock campus. Please see the local resource center or our local website at the following email. Uh, also, the call went out for help with the food drive for members in need and the response has been exceptional. Many items have been donated and will be boxed up this week for members to pick up. This past week, the local union made eight donations of $5,000 each to the following community groups. Salvation Army Food Bank Ingersoll, Salvation Army Food Bank Woodstock, Helping Hand Food Bank in Tilsonburg, the St. Thomas and Elgin Food Bank in St. Thomas, In Out of the Cold Operation Sharing in Woodstock, Ingersoll and District Interchurch Hamper Program here in Ingersoll, and Youth Opportunities Unlimited in London, and finally the London Food Bank in London. The money was made possible through the Social Justice Fund that was negotiated at the last round of bargaining. These services that our members continue to support are excellent resources for people in the community in need. It is possible that some of our own members may have used these services also over the past few years with all the downtime at the plant. Uh, 2024 is stacking up to be a busy year at the local with the triennial election scheduled for the May-June time frame. Early in the new year, a meeting with the election committee will be scheduled to make sure everything is ready for the upcoming elections. The current collective agreement expires on September 17, 2024, and we are in the process of booking venues for meetings. Uh, the Union Hall office will be closed from December 23rd through January 1, 2024 for the holiday period. In the event of emergency, you can contact me at 519-317-6059. And finally, on behalf of the Executive Board and the leadership of Uniform Local 88, I want to wish everyone a safe and happy holiday season. Hello, and thank you for joining us for the December video. We have lots of information to address in this video and many questions that have been sent to us that we will try and answer as well. We'll start with production for the Bright Drop and the battery plants. First, the Bright Drop. Currently at our weekly meetings, we are being told that we will return this spring. No set date has been given. That will come from the company, but we are being told that everybody will be back sometime this spring. One question is, will we be returning on one two or three shifts. We are working on a project right now to reduce our numbers and get our main plant down to two shifts. That means there would be no more three shift rotating scenarios. At this time, we're not sure if it'll be a one or two shift operation, but at least a three shift rotation would not be an option. As part of this plan, we have a proposal for all production members who are looking to retire in 2024. Even if you're just thinking about retiring in 2024 at any point, we are inviting you to a meeting at the Union Hall, January 10th or January 17th from 11 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., both days. If you have 30 years, if you have 85 points, or you're 60 with 10 years of service like a lot of our former EMD members, we recommend you attend the meeting and hear some of the options we have for you. The retiree plan along with the posting, the battery postings, should get our main plant down to two shifts for staffing purposes. Worst case scenario, at least the three shift rotation would be gone. Now the batteries. The battery postings. There will be a video coming and some timelines. There has not been a lot of information on our battery department. We have toured it a couple times in the past couple months. The equipment is getting stalled and it is progressing along. The battery core members are starting January 8th and the battery launch team will start January 15th. We are planning on doing a major battery video the week of January 8th to 12th and hopefully releasing the video by January 12th. 
In this video, we will describe the battery department in detail. We will go over each team and describe what each team does. This will not be a short video. We will try and answer all the questions members have been sending to us so you can make an informed decision on the upcoming postings. We will go over items such as team sizes, team jobs, but also areas such as the parking, clothing, phones, radios, and your chances for overtime. We will touch on many different areas and you will likely want a pen and paper when you watch the video so you can mark the team by team information as we go. One of the biggest issues we will also be able to give you at that time is the start time for your return to work for the battery plant. We will, do, we, will give you, we will do our best to give you the most likely scenario for each team. The battery postings will be going up later in January. At this time, we don't know if it's going to be team leaders only or all three shifts, team leaders and production up at once. That is still a work in progress. Payday during Christmas break. We, we want to remind everybody that the Christmas week and the New, Year week, New Year's Day week are short weeks. Therefore, payday will be Friday on both of those weeks. Vacation. We still have close to 250 members who have 40 hours or greater of outstanding vacation to book. We have sent out repeated reminders to book your vacation. The company will now be forcing that vacation into open weeks starting January 8th. If you have 40 hours of more of outstanding vacation that has not been booked, and some of you have greater than 200 hours, it is going to be forced into the weeks starting January 8th and continue until your vacation is used up. For some of you, that means the entire month of January will basically be vacation time. The union reps will be calling everybody the first two weeks of January to give you a heads up. That way you can mark your EI and your subweeks, uh, re your report forms correctly. There will be nobody at the plant starting December 22nd until we return to work in January to book vacation time or move vacation time around. Okay, 70% sub and the subweek reset. Back in October, the company allowed those on extended layoffs the ability to come back and work a week to gain the 2.5% raise and also to reset their subweeks. With, the with the important fact being, everyone would get a minimum of 36 weeks of sub at 70%. 36 weeks was the number we got because that will get everybody almost a summer shutdown, which should be well beyond the time that we were projected to be down. Now we find out the company did not re renew those people's subweeks that were unextended layoff. This should be a non-factor, provided we are back to work before the end of June. Once you are back to work, your subweeks at that time will be recalculated to your correct level. This was done by the IT department to manipulate the system to get you paid. It seems the IT department is having a very difficult time to make this work, so that was how it was fixed to get you into the 70% level. But once you swipe back in, your correct subweeks will then reappear back on your pay stubs. Bargaining. In late October, we wrote a letter requesting GM, we wrote a letter to GM requesting to enter into early bargaining talks. The recent big three talks resulted in significant wage increases and significant sub changes that would help our members out now tremendously. We were turned down. We are now preparing for our normal bargaining talks to our contract ending in September. You can say September 9th is nine months away, or you can look at it and say in nine months we need a new contract. Either way, September is going to come fast, and our plan, regardless of how our plan is running, we are going to be into a new contract by September. The Master Bargaining Committee will be meeting the last two weeks of January to begin the process of bargaining a new collective agreement. It is our intention to have proposal sheets out to the membership electronically starting February 1st. They will, not be back, they will not be due until March 15th, so you'll have basically six weeks to fill them out. We want and look forward to your input, ideas, and suggestions. On a side note for bargaining, we asked to enter into early bargaining talks because of the substantial raises for the other auto companies that gave their workforce. Even Toyota, who are not unionized, raised their pay by 10% to match the big three effective immediately. Everyone in the industry got a 10% raise except us at Cami. The 70% sub was a nice touch for our members, but bargaining, but bargaining and giving us the same raise as everyone else when our members have gone through so much more downtime than anyone else would have made a hell of a difference for our members right now. The bargaining committee will not forget this next September when our contract is due. In closing, 2023 will conclude another very tough year for our membership. Our, mem our members answered the bell and gave GM their fastest launch ever. 
That was never in doubt and was one of the main reasons we landed a new battery operation. If there is a workforce who can deliver a new venture on time and make it work, it will be us. That was how we argued for 88 to gain the battery work. We have met every project ever given to us with quality scores that only prove the strength of our workforce. To our tradespeople and to our production team, it was your track record that set the stage for us to land the battery production. On behalf of the entire committee, I would like to take this time to wish everyone a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. I hope you have the opportunity to spend some quality time and maybe have some Christmas magic come your way. And remember, if you're a production worker thinking of retiring any time in 2024, please come to the meeting at the Union Halls on January 10th or January 17th. Merry Christmas, everyone.